Big Pharma just got schooled by walking, breathing, and eating whole foods. And no, I'm not joking. For years, people have been told that once they have high blood pressure or a heart condition, your only option is medication. And while medications can be life-saving, they often come with a price. Fatigue, dizziness, weight gain, and a medicine cabinet that keeps getting fuller as the years go on. What if I told you a new study shows that lifestyle changes don't just work, they can rival or even outperform medication without the long list of side effects. That's exactly what I'm going to unpack today. And stay with me until the end because I'll share the one lifestyle shift I bet my medical license on and why your doctor may have never mentioned it to you. This isn't just another health video. This is about reshaping how we think about medicine itself. In this video, I'll break down brand new research on why lifestyle changes are just as powerful as the prescription in your hand. We'll talk about why beta blockers, the classic medication doctors have been handing out for decades, became the standard in the first place when this new research was released and why it matters to your health and your family's health. And I promise by the end, you'll know exactly what steps you can start today without waiting for your next prescription refill. Now let's talk about the study. In the summer of 2025, at the European Society of Cardiology Congress in Madrid, researchers presented results of what's called the Reboot Trial. It was also published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Over 8,400 patients recovering from a heart attack were followed specifically those with ejection fractions above 40%, meaning their heart function wasn't severely damaged. For decades, the rule of thumb was heart attack equals beta blocker. No questions asked. But here's the thing. The trial found that beta blockers didn't clearly reduce death, heart failure, or stroke in these patients. Even more concerning, in women, beta blockers actually increased the risk of death from all causes. Think about that. Thousands of patients taking a drug for protection. And in a large subset, it may be doing harm. That's the kind of data that should make all of us pause. So why did beta blockers become the standard of care in the first place? The story actually starts back in the 1960s with propranolol, the first beta blocker developed. For the first time, we had a way to calm the overreactive adrenaline surge that drives the heart to race pound and strain. By blocking adrenaline's effect on beta receptors, these drugs slowed heart rate, reduced the force of contraction, and lowered blood pressure. They were revolutionary, especially for people with angina, irregular rhythms, and recovering from heart attacks. Over the next decades, study after study showed that patients on beta blockers live longer after a heart attack. They were cheaper, safer, and understood better than many other drugs. For a long time, they were considered almost mandatory after a cardiac arrest. That's why even today, if you've ever been in the hospital for chest pain, chances are you left with a beta blocker prescription in your pocket. But here's the problem with medicine. What's true in one era may not be full truth in another. Beta blockers certainly help some people. If you have heart failure with reduced function, arrhythmias, or certain types of angina, they're still life-saving. But not everyone benefits the same way. Over time, new medications like ACE inhibitors, ARBs, and diuretics, and calcium channel blockers show better long-term outcomes for many patients with high blood pressure. Guidelines started to shift, yet habit, tradition, and clinical inertia meant beta blockers kept being prescribed even when the evidence no longer supported their broad use. That's why this new 2025 research is such a wake-up call. It tells us we need to be far more personalized in our approach. Now let's pivot to what lifestyle medicine brings to the table. Unlike medication, which usually works on a single pathway, lifestyle changes hit the problem from multiple angles at once. Take food, for example. A diet that reduces processed carbs and sugars lowers insulin levels, cuts inflammation, improves endothelial function, and drops blood pressure all at the same time. That's like hitting four birds with one stone. Movement is another one. Something as simple as walking 10 minutes after a meal helps control post-meal blood sugar, improves vascular flexibility, and even boosts nitric oxide, which naturally relaxes your blood vessels. Sleep is the unsung hero here. Poor sleep raises cortisol, which in turn raises blood pressure and makes weight loss almost impossible. Stress management through breathwork, prayer, meditation, and even journaling 
calms the sympathetic nervous system. The very system beta blockers are designed to quiet. Lifestyle changes don't suppress symptoms. They reset the system itself. It's basically my nest framework. But if lifestyle medicine is so powerful, why doesn't every doctor lead with it? The truth is not as sinister as you might think. Doctors want to help, but they're under pressure. Most clinical visits last 15 minutes. That's barely enough time to listen to your concerns. Review your medications, document in the computer, and make a treatment plan. Add to that the fact that most doctors get less than 20 hours of nutrition training in medical school. They're experts in disease management, not necessarily in lifestyle coaching. And let's be honest, our healthcare system rewards procedures and prescriptions more than prevention. It's not that the doctor doesn't care, it's that the system isn't set up to support lifestyle first care. That's why voices like mine, and hopefully yours, need to fill that gap. So what can you do starting today? Let's keep it simple. First, pick one meal a day and clean it up. For most people, breakfast is a landmine of sugar and starch. Swap cereal or bagels for bacon and eggs. If you're not carnivore like me, throw in an avocado or even leftovers from last night's protein-rich dinner. Second, commit to 10 minutes of movement after your biggest meal. It could be a walk around the block, some body weight squats in your living room, or dancing to your favorite song. Boots on the ground, anyone? Third, guard your sleep. No caffeine afternoon, no screens in bed, and aim for a consistent bedtime. Fourth, find a stress release valve. It could be prayer, meditation, or even calling a friend. Small hinges swing big doors. These tiny changes stacked over weeks and months create transformations no pill can rival. And here's the retention promise I made earlier. The number one lifestyle change I'd bet my medical license on is reducing processed carbs and sugar. If you only change that one thing, you'd see improvements in blood pressure, insulin resistance, weight, inflammation, and even mental clarity. I've seen it work in my clinic with patient after patient. It's not sexy, it's not high tech, but it's powerful and it's in your control. Now I want to be clear, I'm not anti-medication. Beta blockers and other drugs save lives every day. If you're on them, don't just toss your pills. Talk to your doctor. Share this study with your doctor, especially if you're female. So I'll make sure to share the link to the study in the video comments. But I am anti-over-medication. I'm against a system that defaults to prescriptions instead of prevention. And I want you to see that lifestyle changes aren't just nice to do. They're medicine, real medicine, without the small print and scary commercials. So if this video gave you even one aha moment, hit that like button. It helps YouTube show it to more people who need this message. And drop a comment. Has any doctor ever suggested lifestyle changes to you before prescribing medication? I'd love to hear your stories. And if you want to go deeper, check out my playlist on metabolic health. It's linked in the description. And let me end with a clever disclaimer. This isn't medical advice. Think of it as Dr. Hampton's friendly medical suggestion. Always talk with your doctor before making big changes. And maybe bring this study with you to your next appointment. It might spark a whole new conversation about your care. Pills can save lives, but lifestyle can transform them. No prescription can make you sleep better, think sharper, or feel more vibrant. That's the power of treating the root instead of patching the symptom. So start with one step today. You're not just surviving. You're building a future where you thrive. I'll see you next time. And until then, keep protecting your nest.